Only one or two generations ago, pretty much all boys were brought up in families where there was a man around, there was a father. Whether he's a good father or a shit father, um, you know, there was a lot of variation on that. But there was pretty clear roles that men and women played. And I think most boys had um, pretty clear role models. And they, it was pretty clear about what they had to do in life uh, in order to be a man in whatever society they existed in. Now, I think there are some advantages to that in the sense that, you know, you understood where your place was. Um, and also some disadvantages in the sense that there was only one place you're allowed to be. I come from a generation where a lot of guys were brought up without father figures and myself included. Not that I don't have a father, I do and I love him very dearly, but he wasn't really around when I was growing up. And as a result, I got to choose my father figures, which is something I'm very grateful for. I didn't have somebody telling me, listen son, this is how you got to be a man, this is what you got to do in life. Um, and so I got the opportunity to go out there and find my own influences. And I think for a lot of guys out there who are in that position, they might feel like they're missing out on something or that they were hard done by. And that can be true if that's what you believe. You can live that crutch all your life that you didn't have a daddy around to tell you what to do. And so therefore you, you never became a man. But I would prefer that you take that as an amazing opportunity to go out there and choose your own life and choose your own mentors. My influences have been diverse and uh, in some ways contradictory. As a teenager, I was really into the doors. When's somebody gonna come up here and love me? And uh, nihilist French literature. And I thought there was no point to life and so we may as well just have a fucking good time. And then I swung from that into becoming quite a hardcore Buddhist. And so my influences were my initial Buddhist and Gung Fu teachers. And to this day, I have amazing respect for those men um, and they influence me every day in the sense that they taught me to take autonomy for myself, to not ex uh, accept anything without experiencing it myself, but at the same time to have the humility to be open-minded enough to experiment with a whole range of internal techniques or mindsets or lifestyle decisions. The women that I have had the privilege to have in my life as lovers or girlfriends have influenced me greatly. Um, I have a profound respect for women and they have taught me more about myself really than anyone else. Because a really good woman, when you meet her, uh, will act as a mirror to you. She will hold up to you your strengths and show you things about yourself that you didn't know existed. And at the same time, she will show you your flaws and your bullshit and reflect that back at you and go, what do you got for me? So the girls that I spent long periods of time with really shaped and influenced my life as well. And I think that's something important to understand if you want to be a great seducer, you need to actually really love women. There are misogynists out there, there are players out there who fuck a lot of girls, but never learn much about women or about themselves as a result. And I pity those men because it's very, very short term greedy goals. Um, I see seduction as a lifelong pursuit, something that both sexes benefit from and both grow from if done in, a, in, an, in an ethical and honest way. So yeah, my influences, Jim Morrison, monks, chicks, and uh, of course the guys that I have come to uh, consider to be brothers and fellow warriors on this path that I've met through being a coach in this. I've met some absolutely amazing men um, and I've also met some amazing charlatans and con artists who've you know, taught me about what I don't want to be and um, what can happen if you follow the dark side too long.